quality 11, what do you mean when you say living out of harmony with divine truth results in penalties or consequences? Well, we need to remember that divine truth is God's truth and we can use the term God's truth interchangeably with God's laws, laws that govern the universe. So all of God's truths, if you like, are all laws. They are written in stone mm -hmm. in the sense that they are unbreakable. You can't modify them or change them. There are a hierarchy of laws, though, so we need to discuss some of that with this section. But basically, whenever we refer to God's truths, we're referring to God's laws. And like all laws, if you break the law, there is a consequence or a penalty for breaking the law. Also, like all laws, if you live up to the law or live in harmony with the law, there are benefits or, or pleasures that come from living in harmony with the laws. And so all of God's truths have this underlying quality, and that is every single one of God's truths is a law, mm -hmm. and every single one of God's laws has a benefit for living in harmony with it and a consequence, a negative consequence, of living out of harmony with it. Or you could call the negative consequence a penalty for living out of harmony with it. And that is the way God has structured the universe, in fact. Now, if we see it, if we can understand that, then we start to understand why we experience pain and mm -hmm. suffering, why we experience other, other, other things other than pleasure. And we can start to understand that every single time pain and suffering is involved in our life, it's an indication that we've broken a law of some kind. Even, it might not even be a law that we're conscious of, mm -hmm. but we have obviously have broken it, otherwise we would not have be in pain and suffering. And every one of God's laws, remember, or let's call them God's truths, are in harmony with love. So that means that every time we act out of harmony with love, we are going to be breaking one of God's truths or breaking one of God's laws. And because we're breaking it, we are now going to engage the penalty or consequence, the negative consequence that comes from breaking the law. And we need to at least start to understand that if we're truly going to understand how to determine God's truth. So there is a, a constant uh, opinion on the earth that there is no such thing as absolute truth. There's just your truth, my truth, you know, and it's very, uh, there's this constant uh, idea or concept, particularly spiritually, less so materially, but spiritually applied, where basically there's a belief that you can get away with anything. Mm -hmm. That's not true. And, and while we believe that, we are out of harmony with many of the laws of love and also God's truths. And as a result, we're going to experience the pain and suffering that comes from being out of harmony with those particular things. So what we need to do with this particular quality is understand that we, we will have negative consequences if we break the truth or we break the law. And there will always be positive benefits from upholding the law or upholding the truth. That's what we really need to understand. Yep. Now, from a physical perspective, most people have no trouble with that, again. So as we've discussed with the previous qualities, it mm. always seems from a physical perspective, very few people have any trouble with understanding that if you break a law, there's going to be a consequence. So for example, um, it's got, go on. What are you well, it's say? hard to distance ourselves from the consequence, isn't of it? Course, it's of course. physical. It's physical in nature, yeah. and we feel it instantly, and yeah. so we generally accept it. From a scientific point of view, we generally also accept it. So, for example, with the law of gravity, we know that if we break the law of gravity, in other words, we don't engage the law in harmony with its use. For example, we go up to a very, very high building and we decide that we're going to jump off. That would be, and if we have no other means other than our own body and no other law that we've engaged, mm -hmm. once we jump off, gravity will take its effect and pull us down to the ground at the accelerating uh, you know, at, ex at, at the acceleration of, in our case on Earth, 9.8 metres per second per second, and we'll hit the ground at a very fast rate, depending on how high we were when we began the fall. Yes. And of course, if we were 10 storeys high, there's a high chance that, uh, that we'll kill ourselves in that process, 
and that would be the consequence of the law. And nobody goes, oh, it's a terrible consequence. <laughs> you know, that yeah. we've, you it's know, not fair it's that not there's fair that consequence. Or any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody just accepts it because it's a physical consequence of breaking a particular law that we understand. Mm -hmm. There are also, in this illustration that I'm giving about the law of gravity, there are also laws that allow us to overcome the law of gravity. You could call them higher laws. And this illustrates that there is a hierarchy of law that applies to the physical side of life. So, for example, the law of aerodynamics. So we've discovered the laws involved with aerodynamics and controlled flight, in other words. And so we know that if we strap something to our back and, and, and engage the law of aerodynamics when we jump off the building, there's a high likelihood we'll be very, very safe, much safer than we were without the apparatus that engages the law of aerodynamics. So you could say the law of aerodynamics doesn't stop the law of gravity from operating. The law of gravity is still operating. Yeah. But the law of aerodynamics allows us to engage a higher law that allows us to control the law of gravity in such a way that we are not adversely affected by it. Mm -hmm. And so therefore there are a hierarchy of physical laws. Now of course there's a lot of physical laws that mankind hasn't even discovered yet. right? even though scientists would want to believe that we've discovered most of them, and many of scientists want, wish to believe that, the reality is there's a whole lot of physical laws that we haven't discovered yet, which are all higher than the law of aerodynamics. And, and so once we discover those, then the law of gravity will have less and less of an effect, a negative effect on our life, and more and more it will just be engaged in complete harmony with love because we understand all of these other laws that give us more freedom. Mm -hmm. So understanding the laws give us, gives us freedom. Yeah. It doesn't create control. When we don't understand a higher law, that's when we have less freedom. That's when we have to be in more control. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand this principle of the hierarchy of laws. But each law has as a consequence, physically, so if we're looking at these physical laws, the law of gravity, for example, each law has a consequence for breaking it. So if we engage the law of gravity and we break it, obviously there will be a consequence. And the consequence will probably, depending on our height from the ground, will result probably in our death or, or major, major harm to our physical body, major pain. Mm -hmm. And might even result in long-term suffering as a result of our choice. Once we engage the law of aerodynamics, as long as we engage the higher law in its full understanding, we can sort of overcome the negative effects of the law of gravity under certain circumstances. And while the higher law is engaged, now we have no negative circumstances. But as soon as the higher law is not engaged, let's say our wings fall off, <laughs> <laughs> or we have not enough forward propulsion or forward movement to control the flight, in other words, we stall, now the law of gravity takes effect yeah. and, and pulls us down to the earth. And so the law of gravity is always operating. Yes but it has been overcome by the higher law, which allows us to have more freedom. And this is a, a beautiful, positive benefit of discovering new laws. Yes. So new truths of God being discovered results in positive benefits and more freedom. This is why I said in the first century, the truth sets you free. Yes. Only if we act in harmony with what we learn. Only if we act in harmony with the law. Yeah. When we act in harmony, out of harmony with the truth or out of harmony with the law, now there are going to be negative consequences for our engagement of the law out in, in the way in which that is out of harmony with its purpose. Yeah. So it's, the purpose of the law of gravity is quite clear. It keeps us on the earth. It stops us from flying into space. If we didn't have it, the earth spinning so rapidly, like I think it's over 1,500 or 1,600 kilometres per hour around... The, we're spinning so rapidly that, that we'd, because of the centrifugal force, we'd fly out into space if there wasn't an, op a, a, an alternative force, such as the law of gravity that pulls us back to the Earth and keeps us here. And also we would have no oxygen to breathe because all of that would have flown into space as well. So it creates a lot of good things for us here on the Earth. And every single one of God's laws does this. They all create beautiful things that are completely in harmony with love in every, with love of ourselves, God's loving ourselves by creating these laws. And so we need to understand that every single one of these laws exists 
and its purpose is love. Its mm. purpose is to create a loving environment in which we can survive. So that's our physical laws. Yes. Now, if we start to examine higher laws, there's higher laws that are related to morality. These are the laws that humankind generally don't understand at all mm -hmm. and therefore break frequently and therefore experience the pain and suffering that comes from the consequence of breaking the law or breaking the truth or not knowing the truth. And as a result of that, we have a lot of pain and suffering that exists on the planet that we then accept as normal. But it's not actually normal from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. It comes as a result of breaking moral laws. Yeah. And then there are higher laws again, and you could call them the spiritual laws. There's the laws that govern our spiritual body, uh, the, way in which we, the way in which our spirit body interacts with the universe. They are laws, again, that uh, allow us to engage. And if we engage them, we'll experience the benefits. Mm -hmm. But if we don't engage them or we try to break them, will experience a consequence, a negative consequence. And then there's laws related to our soul, which mm -hmm. are the highest possible laws. Mm -hmm. They are the laws that govern our future existence by a lot, for, for most people, um, a major part of their future existence. And in fact, in the end, all of your future existence is governed by those higher laws. And the lower laws become less and less necessary for your, for your survival. And the higher laws are engaged more and more and more as you progress. These laws involve ethics and morality, but they also involve in particular love, mm. particularly not only the love that we ourselves share with others from ourselves, but also the laws in go governing how God's love operates upon the universe. They are the very highest laws. And you can think of all of these truths, all of them are absolute truths, they're all laws, they are like the framework that governs God's universe. They are the complete framework in which we live. And every time we engage them positively, we're going to receive benefits. Every time we engage them negatively, in other words, we try to break them, we use our will to break them, we are going to engage a lot of negative consequences. And if we engage it repeatedly negatively, we're going to have a lot of pain and suffering as a result. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're saying if we engage them negatively or we engage them positively, um, we're always engaging them, aren't we? We are. And Whether only... we're aware of the fact or not. Yes. And I often find with some of these moral laws and spiritual laws and soul-based laws that we discuss with people, they often wish to sort of distance themselves from the negative consequences by saying, I didn't understand that law. I mm. didn't know what I was doing. Mm. And yet no one really says that about gravity, do they? No, <laughs> not at all. And so I feel that God has all these laws there and we're all able to understand and learn about them if we simply engage, if yes. we simply live our life. And, and in doing them. that, we're engaging. And feel, them. and feel the pain and suffering that, as a consequence of breaking the law and feel the benefits when we don't. But, but it's an interesting fact that you raise, though, too, and that is that the majority of people do not understand one of the things about higher laws, and that is this. The higher the law, the more probability there is that we are going to dismiss it, mm. which is interesting. Can you explain why that is? Well, because the higher the law, the more refined we need to be with regard to love to understand it. And the more refined we need to be with regard to our desire for truth to understand it. And as a result of our lack of refinement, if we could call it that, mm -hmm. we often completely ignore and not only ignore, but also justify the pain and suffering that results from breaking these laws. So we have, for example, much pain and suffering on the planet with regard to relationships, relationships between partners, for example. We need to understand that the pain and suffering comes not from the disagreement of the two parties, but from a breaking of the law of love that has occurred between the two parties. Yeah. And yet most of us don't go down that track when we're examining those particular issues. What we do instead is we go, I'm in pain and suffering and it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and, or we say, true love isn't possible, it's a myth. Yes, or we say love is painful. We mm -hmm. even go down the track of of love saying hurts. that love hurts yeah. in order to justify the pain that we feel, which is only the result of our breaking the law somehow. Yeah. 
And this is where I feel people use their intellect to minimise, justify, shift the blame and do lots of things with regard to the absolute truths. And the higher the law, the more they do it. Mm. Because the reality is the higher the law, it's, uh, the, it's more refined and operating upon the soul rather than the physical form. So what we finish up doing is we accept the physical laws because there's usually an immediate physical consequence that's painful that we don't want to engage. And so what we do is we accept the operation of that law without any question and without any justification and without minimising it mm -hmm. and without even rebelling against it. We accept the law. Yes. But when it comes to the higher laws, the higher truths, the ones that involve morality and the ones that involve love, which are the highest possible truths of the universe, we are constantly trying to break them. We are constantly trying to minimise, shift the blame, you know, blame somebody else or, or justify the, our position with them. We constantly try to justify our pain and suffering as a result of there being some problem with the universe and not some problem with ourselves. And so what we finish up doing is not understanding this basic truth, which is that God's laws, God's truths always have positive benefits when we follow them and consequences that are negative when we don't. Mm -hmm. And if we truly understood that, we would stop analysing all of these laws differently. We are very hypocritical. Human, humanity is very hypocritical the way we analyse laws. God's laws I'm talking about now. We analyse God's physical laws. We see the cause and the effect. We jumped off the building, we splat on the ground. We see the cause and the effect. We have no complaint about it. We don't try to minimise it. We don't try to, you know, modify the law or rebel against the law somehow. We know it's impossible. Mm -hmm. We know it's impossible because the law is set and it will operate the way it will operate every single time. And we accept it because it's physical. And yet, when it comes to the soul-based laws, the ones that are even more important for our existence to understand, we accept very few of them, if any of them, and what we finish up doing is we try to rebel against them, justify our position, shift the blame on somebody else, minimise our, minimise the, the effect that it's having, and we even tell ourselves that the pain and suffering that comes as the consequence of breaking them is normal. Yeah. We even allow ourselves to get to the point where we accept the pain and suffering rather than going, no, hang on a sec. If God created a perfect world and a perfect universe with perfect laws, if I'm in pain and suffering, it's got to mean that I'm breaking something. Mm. <laughs> I'm breaking some law. And we don't go down that track of even reasoning on that matter. Yes. And two things from what you've just said. We accept how immovable the law of gravity is. Mm -hmm. And yet all of God's laws are, are equally immovable. as immovable. Exactly. The laws involving the soul and morality are all just as immovable as the laws involving gravity. Yes. They're just the same way and they're going to operate the same way every single time and they operate without discrimination. They don't have, you know, they don't deter it's not determined by the colour of your skin yeah. or the gender, that yes. you, you know, whether you're male or female. It's not determined by your justifications. They all operate the same every single time. And yet the majority of us go, Oh, that only applies to the physical laws, but it doesn't apply to the spiritual laws or moral laws or the laws about love. Yeah. How can we even think that, given the amount of evidence we have from the, from the physical laws that all law is immovable? When yeah. it comes to God, all law is immovable. You can't, you know, you can't manipulate it yeah. unless you have knowledge of a higher law that allows for the underlying law still operating to act as if it's not having an effect on you anymore, there is no other way yeah. to mitigate the circumstances that you create through your choice of breaking the law yeah. or breaking the truth. And perhaps you can give us an example of a um, more soul-based law where we can, there's a law operating and we can almost overcome the long-term operations of that law by engaging a higher law. All right, well let's... To help. Let's have a look at that. Let's say um, during, during my life, um, and I, maybe I was in a partnership, it doesn't matter whether I'm male or female here, 
I decided that I would like to abort the child that I've just conceived. Now, if, if it's male or female, it makes no difference. You were involved in the conception. And you, if you decided that you wanted to abort the child, that decision itself has a moral consequence upon your soul. There is going to be pain and suffering that comes on your soul. It's going to be quite extreme. Whether you're sensitive to it now or not, you will become very sensitive to it in the future, particularly after you pass, mm -hmm. unless you engage a law. Now, the two laws that are involved are the law of compensation, which is basically the law stating that you have to compensate for every unloving action you've ever taken in your life. That's one law. Then there's the law of repentance, which is a higher law. And once you engage that law of repentance, it's like the lower law, the law of compensation doesn't exist. Now, the law of compensation is, the pain and su is going to result in pain and suffering to our soul for as long as we refuse to acknowledge the truth, mm -hmm. that we actually took a wrong turn there, mm -hmm. we destroyed the life that we did not have the right to destroy, and as a result, there was a consequence on our soul. Now, the law of compensation will eke out that position through a process of, and it could take many hundreds, if not thousands of years for a person to finish up acknowledging that particular truth. And then when they do, they will progress. Mm. And they will actually be able to now live as if that thing has passed now. But it, but it takes a long time for those particular consequences to have their full fulfilment. While that happens, you are res restricted from where you can live in the spirit world because the le level of love that exists in your soul governs where you live. Mm -hmm. And if you've chosen in your soul to harm the free will of another and even destroyed their life, then that means the level of love in your soul isn't very high and so you are going to be quite limited as to where you will survive or live in the spirit world after you've passed. And you're also quite limited as to what will you will achieve on earth actually because your soul is already engaging the consequences of this law. The higher law states, the law of repentance states, that as long as I am fully repentant and fully aware of all of the consequences of the action that I took, and I actually work my way through the reason why I took those particular actions, then God's love can enter my soul, if I ask for it, and clear away the thing that caused me to take such, the, such an action. Mm -hmm. This has the effect of then meaning that the soul no longer has within it the damage, the reason, which is the damage, of why it took the original action. And therefore, it no longer experiences the consequences of such an action because the reason has, been, has gone. Mm -hmm. So this is a higher law. So this is an example of understanding some soul-based laws and how much of a huge effect it's going to have on your future life. If you believe that having an, like having an abortion is fine, you will find that you will be limited in your future development until you recognise that that's not true. Right? And there's two ways to recognise it's not true. By having the law engaged permanently and the consequential pain and suffering that results from staying in a certain condition where you're a murderer in the spirit world, or by going through a process that you engage through your own will of wanting to repent for such an action, of becoming aware that such an action was out of harmony with love and wanting to correct the reason why you took such actions. That is engaging the higher law. When you engage the higher law, now it's like the lower law doesn't need to have its operation. Yeah. And this is very interesting because the picture you're painting is, this is great news. It's, of course. It's great news. The more we're willing to face inside of ourselves, the more freedom results, the less pain there is. Yes. But I often see a lot of people... And also, can I say, we also have this understanding of the relationship between the pain in our life and the fact that it has a cause. It's not indiscriminate. It's not like some kind of fate that determined the pain that we experience. <laughs> The pain in our life has a cause and we need to discover its cause. And it's actually empowering because we now know a way that we can reduce pain in our life. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. But what I often see people feeling is that penalties are somehow evidence that God is punishing or mm. nasty or it's not fair. And uh, I've had people um, 
in my book group, for example, take severe offence that I use the word penalty in relation <laughs> to God yeah. um, because they feel that that's not how God is really. They know God and God's loving and so there's no penalties. And, um, but that, the, the, interestingly enough, that is totally illogical when you look at the physical laws. The reality is if you jump off a building that's 10 storeys high, there is a penalty. There is a consequence yeah. that's negative yeah. for the behaviour you took. Yes. And, and it's interesting, again, that we accept that with regard to the physical law, but when it comes to these moral and spiritual laws, we don't accept it. Yeah. And if we did look at it in a really logical, rational way, mm. I feel that we see that God's laws uphold order and promote love of yes. ourselves and others and the environment. Yes. We can see that in a physical sense. And they, it's like, a, like a, what I see a lot of people doing with love is they sort of think like, well, as long as somebody loves me, it doesn't really matter whether they love you. Well, God's laws are not like that. God's are equal in, their, in the way in which they're distributed. So in other words, God expects us to be loving to all people <laughs> in exactly the same manner. That means that if I'm loving to my children, but I'm not loving to my neighbour's children, now I'm out of harmony with God's laws somehow because all of God's laws are applied equally. Mm. And this is what I, I feel has happened for a lot of people too, is they, they think that the way God applies the law to them should be different <laughs> than the way God applies the laws to everyone else. And yet if they were logical and rational, they would say, well, hang on, if God made an exception for me, if all of God's laws actually uphold order and promote love, if God made an exception for me, then I would be wanting a, a world, a universe that is less ordered, less functional and less loving. Exactly. And I feel that many of us don't, we're not logical about the way we engage with God's truth or God's yeah. laws. And, and we're we, not even logical about our expectations of God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And also we want to desperately hold on to this idea that God is somehow unloving or somehow to blame <laughs> instead of us actually perhaps needing to, to examine ourselves and be corrected. And that being corrected is actually a loving thing because it helps us be happier in less pain and also promotes order and love in the whole universe. Exactly. Yeah. So God can't love you more than love than God loves me. Yeah. And that if God showed you special favoritism, then that would mean that God loves you more than God loves me. And God's not like that. God loves everyone equally. And so often we grow up expecting special favoritism and mm -hmm. even believing that special favoritism is love. Is love. And it's, and it's not. Special favouritism creates huge amounts of disharmony and pain. When everyone is loved equally, there's no such thing as the disharmony and pain that's created that, that people create on the planet because they are favouring things. And they, in particular, most people on the planet want themselves to be favoured above another. Mm. They're not too concerned. They're pretty upset when another is favoured above them. Yes. <laughs> but, and they feel the pain of that, right? But then, but when they are favoured more than another, they feel, oh, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's not how God's laws work either. That's not how God's truths are. All of God's truths are equal in their operation. They are equal in the way in which they apply. They all have the same penalty or the same consequence, negative consequence, if we break them. And they all have the same positive benefit if we engage them. Yeah. And this results, as you say, in a completely harmonious and, uh, universe. And the only people who believe differently are people who are living on the earth currently <laughs> <laughs> and who are living in the hells and the spirit world yeah. who, start, who feel that they should get away with breaking these laws and feel that there should be some special favouritism in their particular case. Mm. And God's truths are not like that. God's truths are equally applied right across the board. Yeah. And this is if we understood this principle or this quality of divine truth, we wouldn't be expecting even that anybody give us special favoritism. And particularly, we would not expect God to give us special favoritism. We would engage the law every time, yeah. every time. And we'd see when the law, when I break the law, it's the same consequences as if you break the law. And if we both break the law in identical fashion at the identical time and identical time, you know, time and hour we will probably have the identical result. Yes. And this is where, where we have huge amounts of diseases, for example, on this planet that are all caused by exactly the one 
Like, so it, the specific disease has a specific cause and the specific cause is breaking the law of love in a specific way. Yes. Every single disease, every single piece of pain and suffering that occurs on this planet is the result of breaking one of God's truths or not being aware of one of God's truths and breaking it consistently in a certain way will cause a specific certain disease every single time. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people on the planet feel when they get very sick or like, why is God punishing me? Mm-hmm. Or they see, for example, in the homosexual, the homosexual community, HIV AIDS. Oh, that's God punishing them for their lifestyle, mm-hmm. which is really like a, um, a total um, misrepresentation of what's actually going on. Of the operation of the truth. Of the operation of the truth, which is actually that these people are not being punished or even singled out because of necessarily why they're being accused of being, yes. <laughs> being singled out. Yeah. And actually there just may be one issue and sometimes it's a lack of feeling of worth inside of the person. Or it can a, be, but in the case of sexual diseases, for example, yeah, most yes, of the time true. it's the result of promiscuity, yeah. which is breaking one of God's laws, one of God's moral laws. Yes. So, so of course it's going to have some kind of negative consequence. Yes. And, and so uh, heterosexual people and homosexual people are just as prone to, to being promiscuous mm-hmm. and, uh, and as a result have a tendency to See. end up with physical diseases that are sexual in nature yes. because you break the law there will be a consequence. It's not like God's trying to punish you. God's trying to inform you and say, you broke a law of love here. That's why this consequence, which you have actually created. Mm -hmm. So God hasn't created the consequence. You've created it by breaking the law. If you chose to live in harmony with the law, you wouldn't have that consequence. It's quite simple. But most people on earth want to break the truth or break the law. They don't even want to know what the truth is many times. We want to be ignorant of truth. And then we want to expect that there's not going to be any pain and suffering. Exactly. (laughs) And of course, that can't be something that we expect. And this is why it's so important to discover God's truth because it it will have less pain and suffering if we discover it. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. And, you know, I mentioned these physical illnesses, but it's what you referred to earlier that often there's like the vast majority of the world's population is living with extreme emotional pain all of the time. As a result of them breaking laws. Yes, trying to manage it. And yet, again, we focus on the physical when really there's so much feedback being given to us yeah. in in our day to day life yep. as regards to just our emotional pain that we're trying to ignore or avoid or exactly. manage, yeah. And it doesn't only apply to our personal life; it also applies to our collective existence mm-hmm. as humanity, because you know we because we're raping certain nations of all of their resources, and we don't care about people in certain countries. Those particular people in those countries are going through huge amounts of pain and suffering, of which our soul is going to have a penalty to pay at some point in the future for what we have engaged to support their particular rape of their country. And so this is where we need to understand that just because a collective group of people is experiencing a certain type of pain and suffering, it's not because they themselves have been the only people breaking the law. It's because we have engaged the breaking of laws many of the times that have created this pain and suffering. And because we don't love equally... We don't value their pain as much as we value our own. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for clarifying that because that's sort of where I was trying to head when we talked about the physical illnesses Mm. because we see vast majorities of people in Africa and different nations that are actually in a lot of pain and suffering Mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. But the reality is because large groups of people in the West are breaking moral laws, they are actually accruing a lot of emotional pain that they're not necessarily, they might be physically well because they're able to control a lot of variables in their environment, Mm -hmm. but actually their pain can be, they're accruing quite a lot of pain. Soul-based pain. Soul-based pain Mm -hmm. because of this breaking of the law of love and ignoring God's truths in these areas. Exactly. So sometimes the consequences we see and we say are a big issue 
Sometimes there's even bigger consequences being accrued by other people in other places. Yes, from a soul perspective. Yes. I agree. Yeah. And this is why we need to be more sensitive to what's really going on from an emotional perspective, yeah. which is another part of equality, one, yeah. another one of God's qualities of truth yeah. that uh, we need to understand. Yeah. Um, the, the big problem that we face on the earth is that we judge each other quite significantly. Now, that is also the breaking of a moral law, mm -hmm. which will have its consequence, both upon the person being judged, um, because it's out of harmony with love, but also upon the person who's doing the judging. And the person who's doing the judging is going to have a worse consequence mm -hmm. in the long run than the person being judged. Mm. And if the person being judged lets go of any pain that they have received emotionally, and they actually work through forgiving the people judging them, in the end, the person being judged may not have any pain, yeah. while the person who's doing the judging may finish up with years of, or even centuries of pain to go through because of the level of judgment and the actions that they've taken as a result of their judgment of others. So just because um, we examine certain things physically on earth and we go, oh, just because my body looks okay and that person's body, we, we, as soon as we're doing that, we're automatically incurring a penalty on ourselves. Yeah which is interesting in itself. It is. And that's having a soul-based law that we're breaking that's going to have a negative consequence on our soul that will affect us until we realise we're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And if we don't realise we're doing the wrong thing for the next thousand years, then that's how long it's going to have a consequence on our soul for the next thousand years. Mm. And it's really up to us to choose to do something different to that. And that's what I like about this quality of God's truths. On one hand, it allows us to have all of these positive benefits from understanding that every single thing that happens in our lives has a cause, an underlying cause. And under, this is the thing that we need to come to understand. And the cause basically, drawn down to its simplest denominator, is we acted in or out of harmony with love. And as a result, when we acted in harmony with love, we have all these lovely positive benefits. And if we act out of harmony with love, we have all these terrible consequences that are very painful. And if we engage them all the time, it creates a lot of suffering. And we therefore, through this system, can discover when we're living in harmony or out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. And if we truly desired to love, you could see how much of a positive impact that would have, not only on our personal life, but also on our environment. It would mean, personally, once we were perfected in love, we would have no pain and suffering. Yes. And on our environment, it means that every single person who interacts with us would not have any real pain and suffering caused by their interaction with us. And I feel that that gives us a lot of power Definitely. to change and understand how to change our life. Mm -hmm. And the world we live in. And the world we live in. Yeah. And uh, this is so just understanding this one quality of divine truth gives you a lot of power to change not only your own life but also the lives of any person that you touch. Mm. Yeah. Thank you.